Yo, what's up guys, Ghost here, and today we're going to address the topic of vehicle spam, OP vehicles, whatever you want to call it, one of the things that players seem to hate about Battlefield 2042. You know, it feels like every two seconds you get run over by a bolty or spammed by a million rocket pods coming out of a nightbird before you even know it's there. So how can we address this issue? Now in DICE's last blog post detailing patch 3.3, the one that came with the scoreboard, they briefly mentioned that the next update due to release in early April would target weaponry changes on vehicles, but I think they need to make some changes in more than just the weaponry. Now for those of you who watched my channel for some time, you'll no doubt have noticed I'm a big vehicle guy. I've always been a vehicle main in Battlefield games. Um, for those of you who've been here a really long time, you'll know that I basically built this channel on my jet gameplay and tutorials for Battlefield 4. So here are some of my ideas to improve the vehicles and make them a little bit less spammy. So I think the first major problem is actually the light vehicles. And that's not to say there aren't problems with other vehicles, but we'll get to those in a second. So I'm talking about the MC5 Bolty, the Hovercraft and the LATV4 Recon. In past games, we only had the Jeeps and Hovercraft maybe, they had a heavy machine gun equipped at most, and they were susceptible to pretty much everything like the cannons from the Little Bird. Now, you have these light tanks rolling around the maps, spawning like crazy. They've got insane weaponry, 30mm cannons that were previously only available on an attack helicopter, tow missiles, and the minigun that you can just spam endlessly before it incurs a cooldown. Furthermore, they're armoured, so they can only be significantly damaged by explosives, they move ludicrously fast, and on top of all of that, running over people in 2042 is very forgiving to vehicle users because the soldier hitboxes just seem to be absolutely massive. Like, you only need to look at a stationary vehicle next to you, um, you just keel over and die. So when you take how powerful fast, mobile and well defended these things are, couple that with the fast respawn rate and the number of them, sometimes as many as six per team, it's just absolutely mental. Now the other two light vehicles, the hovercraft and the jeep thingy, they're way more squishy, but you know what, that doesn't even matter, because why would you take a hovercraft or a jeep over a bolty? They literally have no advantages over the bolty, like my feeling is that these vehicles are primarily to get you around the map, you know, get you over those huge open areas to the next objective, sure. But they shouldn't be killing machines. So here's what I suggest. First of all, make the Bolty more susceptible to damage. They at least need to take damage from the Nightbird and maybe even small arms fire. Get rid of the 30mm cannon altogether, it just doesn't belong on light vehicles like that in my opinion, it just adds to the explosive spam. The minigun can stay in the absence of the HMG, but they really need to make it overheat faster so that you can't just spam down an entire squad with ease. I'm not sure on this next one, but maybe, maybe even reduce their speed a little bit. I'm all for them, you know, being transportation vehicles to help infantry cross the battlefield safely. And since the maps are so big, you, you really do need a lot of them. But right now, they're just too good for running people over. Okay, next we're going to move on to transport vehicles, the Condor or Superhind for the Russians. And of course, everybody's favorite, the Nightbird. I cannot tell you how many hateful comments I've had on my channel just because I'm flying a Nightbird in the background footage, you know, but I, I get it, I really do. For a vehicle that's classed as a transport, they're insane, absolutely bananas, and people are tired of getting killed by them. DICE, nobody, nobody is using the Nightbird as a transport vehicle, okay? They're using it to shred the enemy team. So for that reason, I really think it should be lumped in with the jet and the attack helicopter, therefore reducing the overall number of spammy vehicles. With the current token spawn system, you can either take a transport heli like the Condor or the Nightbird. And honestly, it's a no-brainer. The transport helis, you know, they are really good with a full complement of gunners, but if you're flying solo, it's just not even a contest. Now, the main offender 
of the Nightbird is, of course, the rocket pods. You get, I think, 16 of these bad boys, and you need, like, what, three or four to kill a soldier on the ground. So you can just imagine the carnage that unfolds once you get a decent pilot in one of these things. The rocket pods are too powerful, they reload too fast, their velocity is too fast, their splash damage is too great, there is just literally no skill factor to using them at all. Any noob can pick up this helicopter and destroy an entire squad on the ground and that's where a lot of this vehicle spam is coming from. It's no longer that occasional pro pilot gunning you down with his miniguns, it's now a level 10 player flying for the first time spamming you with rocket pods in third person. So this is what I suggest, move the Nightbird to the attack vehicle section along with the jets and the attack heli and then make some necessary changes to the rocket pods. If you're going to keep the damage and the splash they need to reload slower and travel slower so there's actually some semblance of skill to them. You can't have the best of both worlds. Powerful weapons should be difficult to use and the greater the power the greater the difficulty. Actually it's kind of ironic because the miniguns of the Nightbird are pretty difficult to master but are not nearly as effective as the rocket pods so if they weren't so trash I would actually just say get rid of the rocket pods altogether and you know maybe buff the miniguns a bit, give them a tighter spread, maybe get rid of the spool up time etc. As for the actual transport helicopters, way too tanky, just way, way too tanky. You know, if you come up against one of these things with three gunners, you're just screwed, a hundred percent. Like, I have seen those transports with three gunners and two guys repairing them, they just never die. Like, unless you catch them unawares, you, you get down real close to them and hit them with your entire salvo of rocket pods if you're in the Nightbird, good luck, because those gunners will shred you before you even get them to, like, 70% health. Right now, I just feel like the tankiness of them gives them all the time in the world to react. You know, if they get hit by, like, three lock-on missiles, they just sort of shrug it off, get repaired up, and they're good to go again. So yeah, maybe tone down the insane health of transports a bit too. Now, moving on to attack vehicles, the attack heli and the jets are, ironically, the least broken of all the vehicles. The attack heli had its 30mm cannon nerfed considerably, and they feel really slow and sluggish to fly. So hitting one with, you know, an M5 or a lock-on is pretty easy. They've also got enemy nightbirds, jets, and of course other attack helis chipping away at them, so I actually find that I die the fastest in an attack heli. They do really shine though if you have a co-pilot with you in Discord so you can call out targets, but since team play is pretty much dead in 2042, you'll never really find a decent gunner by yourself and instead you'll end up flying solo. So for that reason I don't really feel like the attack helis need any significant nerfs. The jets on the other hand have AGMs that do tons of damage to armour on the ground and they reload almost as fast as you can come back around for another strafe. Once again they require zero skill, same goes for heat seekers that are available to both jets and attack helis, way too easy to use and super effective. Once again the only challenging thing for the jets, the cannons have you know so much spread that they're barely worth using unless going for a larger target like an attack heli or a tank. Jets are pretty much useless against infantry outside of the beginning of round of ramming tactic that DICE really should fix. So I feel like most players aren't too annoyed by the jets really. If I could have DICE completely redesign the jets, I would do, but let's face it, that isn't going to happen, so my suggestions would be to improve the viability of both the 25 and 30mm cannons and decrease the efficacy of heat seekers and AGMs. And finally that leaves us with the tanks and the wildcat. Honestly right now I feel like tanking in 2042 is extremely weak. Tanks are supposed to roll on into a flag backing up their infantry and be this difficult object for the enemy to defend against, but due to the nature of the specialist system Everybody's running either, you know, an M5 or C5, so if you get into a situation where you're surrounded by enemies on a cap, you'll be dead in a split second. The turret turn speed 
is just too slow and it leaves you open to getting C5'd. Recon drones can strap C5 on there as well, a super cheap way to get rid of a tank that the tanker can do nothing about. So all of this encourages tankers to instead sit back where it's safe and snipe. And that is one area I think the tanks are a little too good. The shells have a very fast velocity and barely any drop, making it quite easy to hit far off targets. And you know, as an infantry player, it's just zero fun dying to a tank shell from halfway across the map. So I would say, you know, make sniping from long distances a little harder for the tanks by increasing shell drop and reducing velocity, thereby forcing the tanks into closer proximity and, you know, onto the objectives, onto the flags to try and actually play the objective. But then they'd also adversely have to increase their survivability too. You know, definitely increase the turret turn speed so they have a chance to defend themselves and possibly even look into nerfing c5 maybe not necessarily the damage but right now i feel like the throw distance is really really far overall i feel a lot of the vehicle issues stem from the fact that they're just so easy to use you know the rocket pods for the nightbird the lock-on AGMs and heat seekers for the jets, even the flight systems, especially for aircraft, are just really designed to make it almost impossible to crash into the ground. So I think when you have that number of vehicles in a game with weapon systems that even a child could get a kill with, you really expose the infantry to that because now you have the noob vehicle players getting, you know, a decent amount of kills, but you also have the pros going absolutely ham. I mean, I can tell you in Battlefield 4, if I spent the entire round in the attack jet, getting like 25 or 30 kills was quite a decent round. In Battlefield 2042, people are getting 100 plus kills easily in the Nightbird. Easily. So there are some of my ideas, guys. By all means, let me know what you think down below. And more importantly, if you have any ideas of your own to share, then leave those there as well. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like is a big help. I stream a few nights a week over at twitch.tv slash ghostgaminggg for anyone who wants to come hang out and talk to me live. Don't forget to subscribe for more upcoming Battlefield content. I'll be bringing you guys all the news on Battlefield, good and bad, and I'm also planning to get my feet wet in World War III. Have a good one, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.